Hello, my name is Ranjana Jain. I work as an IT Pro Evangelist with Microsoft India. In my role as an IT Pro Evangelist, my job is to basically talk about the most upcoming and newest technologies from Microsoft. So today I'm going to be talking about Windows being a secure platform by default. Now in 2002, Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates introduced this initiative called as a Trustworthy Computing Initiative. As a part of this initiative, we made sure that any product that's developed from Microsoft Corporation comes to you as a product of what is called as a Security Development Lifecycle or SDL. In the Security Development Lifecycle, we make sure that each and every team that is developing and designing an operating system feature or any new product is associated essentially with a security administrator who overlooks and analyzes the security aspect of each and every feature for the operating systems. As a part of security development life cycle, we make sure that any piece of code being developed by Microsoft undergoes a comprehensive testing and follows a certain a set of rules and standards while coding any piece of software or feature for the operating system. So in order to achieve this particular target, we made sure that each and every product coming out of the Microsoft development factories after 2002 was made secure from inside and by default. Windows Vista developed as a, as a part of the security development life cycle, Windows Server 2008, were all parts, were, were all products of pure security development life cycle. Also, Windows Vista as an operating system is ISO EL uh, Evaluation Assurance Level 4 Plus certified. As a part of this uh, developing, a, developing a secure platform, we made sure one, a code integrity was followed so that even if an operating system uh, internal file was uh, damaged or was, uh, uh, was malfunctioning by any way, we made sure that during the sta startup, the original files were restored in their original position and the damaged files could be replaced with the original versions of the operating system files. Hence making sure that your operating system is secure right from the time it starts up. Windows firewall being enabled, Windows firewall being enabled for both incoming and outgoing uh, and outgoing requests was enabled by default. Also we made sure that user account control was enabled, Windows Defender as an anti-spyware was already installed and running all the time into your system protecting you from the spyware. Also we made sure uh, that unsigned software could not be installed by default on the operating system. So every time uh, an administrator tries to install any unsigned software or unsigned driver which is not digitally signed, we make sure that we give him a warning saying that it is not secure to actually install such a driver or software which is not digitally signed. Digital signature although does not is not a surety of the, of the driver code or the software code being actually uh, are being actually securely developed but at least it gives us a surety of, of an organization or a developer who has developed this particular software or this piece of code so that in case this piece of code or software tends to damage any of the operating system code we can actually get back to the developer making sure that he takes the responsibility of being responsible uh, he takes the responsibility of damaging the operating system code and hence by this way indirectly we are making sure that we developer we, we install and develop and get our vendors to develop the most secure software which is compatible perfectly to work with the operating system and does not interfere with the secure functioning of the operating system and does not develop any vulnerability into the system the user account control made sure that accidentally even the user was not was always made aware whenever he wanted to make any kind of changes to the system settings or to the operating system registry now while talking of user account control i must elaborate what user account control actually does to your system as a practice we have seen that although the administrative user account is reserved for the administrator to use but we see that over a period of time we see all the local users and most of them especially at home working on their computers using the administrative privilege user accounts so while you surfing internet while logged on as an administrator onto your system the internet explorer application is also the administrator of the system now and hence every website that you surfing in internet explorer 
becomes the administrator of your system now the way an operating system is developed your processor actually has multiple layers at which at which it allows the operating system code to function at the layer 0 or the innermost layer the core layer it allows the most secure piece of software code to work because any code working at layer 0 has got complete and un and complete privilege of access to the entire set of system resources including the secure memory area and the hardware the next layer which is the layer 1 is reserved for uh, system drivers or system uh, inbuilt uh, services so that they can work in very close relation to the operating system kernel and the services and can make direct calls for accessing the hardware layer 2 which is another outer layer is reserved for multiple other external services and authenticated softwares to work so that they can use APIs to make calls to hardware and interact with system resources. The layer 3 which is the outermost layer is the layer reserved for the standard users, for unauthenticated hard, uh, hardware drivers and for external third party applications to work so that they've got least amount of privilege to access the system resources. Now the user account control made sure that even if you are working in the administrative privileges which is generally a level uh, a, le a layer 1 access and has got high access to system resources even if you are working at that level it gives you actually two tokens one is the administrative privilege token that works at level 1 and one is the standard user token that works at level 3 when you log on to their system and you're using, uh, you're doing normal day-to-day -day tasks like using Microsoft Office or any normal applications, all you're using is the standard user token. The moment an administrator thus clicks on a setup.exe file or any kind of driver installation or the software installation is required, he gets a prompt asking and confirming whether he wants his session to be accessing the administrative privileges to jump into the privilege mode and make the changes to the system. In case he confirms that yes, this is the change he wants to be made to the system, he, con he consents to yes, else he consents to no. Now, what is the advantage of this kind of prompting and consenting? In this case, when you when you're surfing the internet using the Internet Explorer, since you are working with a standard privilege token, even the Internet Explorer right now is, is working with the standard privileges and even the website that you are surfing in the Internet Explorer is also working with standard privileges. So by chance, if you are surfing, surfing a website that has got any kind of malicious code and it tries in the background to go save a file inside Windows System 32 to go make changes to the system registry. Since you are the administrator, Internet Explorer is the administrator, hence this site is the administrator of the system this website would not be stopped from making any such changes to your system registry. The only problem being that regularly if you are working as real administrator and you are doing day to day many tasks as an administrator, we got the feedback that this feature of user account control being, uh, con being uh, uh, you know, prompting the administrators again and again for consent was pretty intrusive and the administrators actually did not find it very user friendly to work with. So with the advent of this feature in Windows 7, we gave you a choice to actually set the level of the user account control prompting for the standard user and for the administrators. And as such by default in Windows 7, we make sure that the administrators only get this prompting done only when they are making changes or they are installing software which is not part of Windows by default.